One More Chance episode, I don't fucking know, season two. And before I, I jump right into it, let me just say sorry, guys. Like, what this is right now is me multitasking my morning. I'm trying to compartmentalize my life right now. And today, that consists of me taking care of kids uh, on virtual school learning because they have to quarantine for another goddamn two weeks. Be taking care of my, and my baby. Be cooking breakfast for them. Planning lunches now. Taking out my hair and giving you a motherfucking video, okay? So, um, Alexa, play some slow jams. I just got this Alexa, uh, this Alexa, and now I see what the big fuss is about. I love her. I love her. She came free or with some type of deal when I bought this microwave or whatever, and um, it's amazing. Okay, you can stop now, Alexa. Alexa, you can stop. Alexa, don't show off too much. Alexa, stop. You got to talk to her a couple of times, you know, she hard of hearing. <laughs> so anyway, jumping right into it, we're picking up from Chance and Mike, Micah being in the backyard and they're talking about eliminations and how Skittles should have got been given a boot. Mikey is furious. He's adamant that Skittles is not the one. And I'm lost because Skittles doesn't give me the impression of someone who wasn't really there for him. Like, something must have had, happened behind the scenes. I mean, did she, when he says she was slinging them, them wigs, like, what does he mean by that? Did she try to, you know, get him to jump in on co-signing or, or, or being like a, a shark tank to her? you know, ideas and, and her brand. Like, I don't understand that she tried to, you know, get him to help her market it. Like, I don't understand the personal tension and, and the disdain he has for that woman. Like I said before, she's not my favorite person, but she's beautiful. I love her chocolate skin. And I love how it is easily paired with colored hair. You know how hard that fucking shit is to do for a black woman? I mean, I remember when people, doubters, naysayers, haters, or whatever, um, even our own black people, I remember them saying that certain colors black women couldn't wear. And it seems like, you know, Skittles, she, she, she is making them believers because she looks gorgeous with those colors. And I hope she goes far or whatever. Um, I didn't like them saying that they wanted to eliminate her. But anyway, then the girls are in the car and they're like, they're going to a ranch. They're dressed for the occasion. You know, Bones is looking like, you know, the Western Tina Turner. Like everybody has on their fringes, their cowboy boots, some type of attire. And, and Biggie's just got to be the only stupid one with the goddamn pubic hair on her damn lips. I think it was supposed to be a mustache. It wasn't cute. So anyway, they get there and they're surprised by this um, assembly of um, a stage and a stripping pole. And they're like, yeah, we're going to get down with it. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna show our talents or whatever. And I kind of enjoyed it. Not because they literally made an ass out of themselves. Out of themselves. It's because they were having fun. They were getting along. They were laughing. They were encouraging each other on when the next one came on the stage. And I liked it. Now, the first person was up was my girl Bones, and baby looked like Betty Mother F and Spaghetti. And I'm not saying that in a body shaming way. Like any of you who had the privilege of having that doll under a Christmas tree, you and not both know you couldn't wait to unwrap that bitch and just and just start moving her arms this way, that way, this way, some of that way, some of this way. You couldn't wait to do that. And what I'm saying is Bones is flexible like Betty Spaghetti. And she was giving him all what she got, whatever. And when he was so surprised out of his goddamn cowboy boots, he was like, girl, why haven't you shown me this before? And she's like, with her head, because she's like a bobblehead. She's like, you can get this every night. You can get this every night, you know? And um, it behooves me because he had no intentions of picking her in the first place. Everything he did, it was like backhand compliment. She's pretty, but she's cute. She's beautiful, but her coochie looks like uh, a hoof. It's long. She's beautiful, but, you know, it's just like it's it's too much of the backhand the compliment, compliments or whatever. When you got to rationalize by saying, but you never meant to, she wasn't going to be your pick. 
It was nothing that she was going to do that you deemed, you know, great work in your eyes. You were never going to pick her. So then who was next? Um, I don't really want to talk about smiles because, like I said before, something about her, it's not there. It's not there. She's a gorgeous woman. She has all... Um, all of her, from all of her qualities from A to Z or whatever in the physical, physical, like she can turn a, a, a heterosexual woman, you know, gay. Okay. But it, it, she wasn't turning me on to cut it short. Let me just stop making excuses. It, it's like, she's gorgeous. She got everything going on. She's even shaking it and doing everything she needs to do. And it's one of those situations where I, I, I'm, I wasn't turned on. If I was a man, I wouldn't be turned on either. But, um, Bad and Bougie was next, and uh, she just gets on my nerves, my last nerves. She walks up on that stage real slow, per usual, and I swear I heard somebody say this. I swear I heard somebody say, bitch, get on that stage already. Oh, my God. Like, rewind it. Rewind it. I swear to goodness, if you can rewind, go back, you're going to hear someone say, get on that stage, bitch. God, because she was taking her time. And that's why I love this show. I love this show because it doesn't hold back. It doesn't cut nothing out. It airs every freaking thing. The backstabbing. The, it just everything. The titties. Uh, the certain things they say. So it surprises the hell out of me because I'm not used to seeing this type of stuff on television. Now, don't get me wrong. Like when I was younger, I did used to watch, you know, HBO, Real Talk, Real Sex take two or whatever girls you know what i'm talking about don't act like you don't know what i'm talking about but that's the only time i see really raunchy stuff on this hbo showtime or porn when you on a reality show you haven't seen this raunchiness there's no limit to what they say out of their mouths and it's not bleeped out so yeah i was surprised when that girl said hurry up bitch you on that stage it was like damn they ain't bleeped that out <laughs> so anyway she gets up there and i'm not impressed and let me tell you why I'm not impressed. I'm not impressed because this woman hails from the the upper echelon of the Caribbean islands. Okay? Trinidad and Tobago. You know? You know, you got your dance hall from Jamaica. But it's something about them Trinidadians or whatever. That, that, and that carnival, carnival type of theme. And those feathers. And, and those sexy outfits and 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 they're gyrating and they get down or whatever and boop 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 that's you know soca type of feel like them soca music i expected her to get down like that and it's one of those type of stereotypes where they try to like they say that all black people can jump or all black people can dance or whatever so maybe i'm being ignorant and saying that all caribbeans can can dance and whine and really groove. She was just giving me two American eyes. I'm sorry. Um, what else? What else? What else? Um, I got to give it up for my girl Yodala because like I said before, I was ready for Chance to send her on packing. She had too much personal issues going on. But one thing I like about her, she takes accountability for herself and she apologizes. But when she got up on that, stage or whatever not stage when she got up on chance no one was suspecting that no one was suspecting that now all the girls were like i'm scared now because she's been holding back so all the girls are like damn bitch this is what you're gonna bring to the table you see she i wanted to zoom in on soldier girl i wish i was a fly and the pal of that horse shit on that ranch to see them ladies faces when uh Yodela was doing her thing. They were all freaking shaking in their boots or whatever. She planted a kiss on him afterwards and said, I know you've been miss missing this. I'm back in the game. And that was it. Um, who else? Roly Poly. She got down with it. And home girl. You would think. I was waiting for her to make an ass out of herself for people to laugh because of her weight. I was waiting for the TV to shake and, and, and you know, them to do some type of bullshit editing like that. Like, boom, boom, tornado. But that, that, that performance, she did her thing. I mean, shit was shaking in the right places. Shit was shaking and moving in the right places. It looked good. It looked it good. It, it looked it good, okay? So, um, she shocked the shit out of me or whatnot. Um, she did her thing. 
Skittles, 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 baby. She copied the hell out of Yodala. She went right after Yodala, but she copied the hell out of her. It was one of those things, like she said before, she admitted that she cannot dance. She's not a dancer. Um, but you could have came up with something else. You could have improvised with something else. I know she was next, and you know how, like, if you're in a contest or whatever, you're like, I want to see what so-and-so got first, and then I'm going to go next, you know? So, it was like, yeah, you went next, and you took her damn moves with you, <laughs> okay? It was the same on the stage for one minute, one second, then she jumped on, on Chance, and Chance says, oh, she's hurting me, or whatever, and then she, she got on her theme, um, things, and she started humping on them, and other things like that, the same moves that Yodala did, and what I don't like, though, is I don't like Chance saying that her boobs was hard, she's hard, he was, um, like I said, stereotyping her, because she's from New York, and those women are supposed to be hard, now, I've lived in New York for 15 years of my life, um, I would consider myself raised there, and um i know how hard women from that the city can get okay they don't call it the belly of the beast for nothing but she, i don't think she was actually that hard she was actually gentle with your ass chance so um who else uh biggie she, she did some and i'm just wasn't compl i wasn't that awed i was at flawed I, I just everything she does to me is distasteful as fuck um it gives me you know stripping is a way of empowerment you know some people can take take it as it is or whatever to each his own perception is um you know um individualized and um i just feel as though it's a way to empower it's a way of get my rent paid you know, you know, pay my car, no, act right, Negro, you know, it's a way of ruling the world or claiming your, your, your the sexy parts of your body or whatever, and sh she just doesn't give me that, everything she does is on some sex trafficking looking forced shit, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, getting on your knees crawling, you know, Making yourself look bad and low. Putting that thing around your noose around your neck and having to pull it and whatever. And you, oh, ride me like a, ride me like a stallion. Like, it's just like, ugh. <clears throat> it does not speak of empowerment. Just, I'm glad she got the boot. I'm glad she got the boot. Now, I think this is not last. Not, not last, but not least. I think Soldier Girl. Soldier, um, Soldier Girl. Off the bat, she's not another dancer either. When she got on that dirt or whatever, and she's gyrating down there on that floor, and Chance gets behind her, it was the ultimate, ultimate spectrum of chemistry. Because on the spectrum, chemistry can be sexual. It can be um, just an energy. It can just be, it doesn't always have to be physical. Okay? But this form of chemistry was on the spectrum of sexual. You can tell that he's been back there when he got behind her, when she was shaking and shaking it, and he just got behind her and start humping her booty cheeks. You can tell he's been back there before, okay? He's been back there before, and it was undeniable chemistry, and them girls felt it. They felt it up there, and they were like, yep, bitch fucking him. Bitch is fucking him, like, look. he was. That was the only time that he ever got into it. He didn't get into it like that with nobody else but her because they're fucking. Now, he made this comment that was contradicting itself um, in the green screen. He was like, um, dang, Soldier got like this. I wish she could do this in the bedroom. Girl, well, you know she's been doing that in that bedroom because not for nothing. I know she's not, you know, laying on them sheets on her back while you just doing everything. She's reached the lowest of desperate by sleeping with you because she wants to win. Why wouldn't she give it her all in the bedroom? Why would she just lay there? Because if you're going to do what you got to do to win, you better give it your mother F and all. So I don't believe she was just stagnant and just laying there, you know, like a stick in the motherfucking mud. And he was just doing his thing. Stop it, Chance. That's just your way of saying that you want, you're want you not really sleeping with her. Um, but you are. Um, what else? What else? So um, he eliminates or whatever. And... 
one person who I'm just displeased and I don't like him with the way he eliminated freaking Skittles. Like I said before, something must have happened behind the scenes. Like, was she really, did she really come to him and say, hey, can you um help me with these wigs, promote my wigs? Because why did he say, don't, sling, don't sling, sling no wigs in my face, sling no wigs somewhere else? Why did he say that? Something must have happened behind the scenes where we weren't able to hear or see. Okay, but it'll probably be talked about in the re in the reunion. But the way she walked out, it was tasteful. She could have went off. And she says, "Bye, Micah. Bye, Chance," and that was it. Like like I said, gentle New Yorker. I ain't see her as no uh no vengeful, you know, aggressive um woman. <laughs> I, I, where did he get that from? I, I don't know. So um, that's it. Now I know. Next episode, I don't know if it's the final episode because I feel as though they're trying to cram everything in at the last moment because they're trying to accommodate for the um, earlier episodes that were totally a shit show. They were fighting for the most part. So maybe they did have, it just doesn't seem like it, this is a planned out type of script, whatever. Like, it's like almost like you get it. You go as you get it, you get it as you go, if that makes sense. Like, I really think they didn't have any ideal type of plans. I'm not saying that they that Zeus is broke. I'm not saying that. But, you know, bachelorette shows are usually like, um, you get individual time with these ladies. You go on dates or whatever. You meet the mama or something like that. You have, um, you know, competition games or whatever. Who wins goes on a date with me. Um, at the end of the, um, show, I send three or four girls to Cancun or whatever, and I make my decision there. I don't know, so maybe it's just, a, I don't know. I just, just, they're just trying to trial and error? Trial and error, I don't know. But um, like I said before, I don't have a specific woman that I'm rooting for. Like, I'm not naive to the fact that reality shows are not always real. So I don't even know if he's going to end up with one of these ladies or he'll do. he'll probably do another show. It'll probably be a season three, three most likely, um, before they get tired of his ass. But I'm not rooting for any one of them, okay? This is not like uh, how it was on Love, or Flavor of Love when I was rooting for New York, uh, or, or what's the name? What's her name? Hoops, or whatever. This is not like, um, what's the one I used to watch when I was younger? Freaking uh, Top Model, where I was rooting for Ava. It's not like that. I ain't rooting for nobody. It just makes for fun TV. And thank you who subscribed. Thank you for those who took your time out to like, to comment. I appreciate it um, because I always live by this quote no matter what. No matter if I'm digging so poor that I got to dig dusty ass quarters out of my couch. Or if I elevate to the point of success where when I make deposits at the bank, it's going to take me like five hours to clear that bag out. I'm always going to use this quote no matter what position I am in life. What matters most is quality. Not fucking quantity, quality. And I say this because I seldomly get subscribers or likes. Um, I am proud of myself because I have 550 subscribers. But that's in a um, combination of um, separate videos that I do. Sometimes I don't know where the subscribers come from. I only know when they leave a positive comment and I'm like, when it gets to my email and it says so-and-so subscribe, I'm like, oh yeah, I just, you know, spoke to her in a comment. But th right now, I really don't know where the subscribers come from at this moment, which page. Oh, but anyway, I am thankful because without viewers, there wouldn't be no such thing of TV. It wouldn't be no such thing in music. It wouldn't be no such thing of um, YouTube influencers. And I appreciate <clears throat> the respect and love I have because you took time out of your daily schedule to watch, take a minute out of your time and watch a stranger, a complete stranger. That's not a celebrity, not in the limelight or whatever, a humbled, complete stranger. You saw something in, in me enough to click that like button, click that subscribe button and keep on watching. And I thank you for that. I appreciate it. Quantity over quality. <laughs> Did I say that wrong?
<laughs> quality over quantity. Okay? Till next time, you've been watching your girl, L. Davis. Goodbye.